Hello everybody and welcome to another night here in the Heroes Launch. Today we're gonna see a Division 2 game at the top of Division 2 between Dawn of the Doors, which are currently first, and Band of Pros, who are third right now. So both teams already with one foot in the playoffs. And I don't think they've got a chance to... At least Dawn of the Doors don't really have a chance to drop out anymore. They already got 7 wins, Band of Heroes with 6 wins. So we are... Actually, first of all, let's take a look where we are going to. As we see here on the side of Dawn of the Doors, we see a ban against Ultra Pass and Towers. No wait, sorry, on the side of Dawn of the Doors we see the band against Sky Temple and Volskaya Foundry. And on the other side we see Band of Brewers removing Ultra Pass and Towers of Doom from the map. So we have left Battlefield of Eternity, Carousolo, Dragonshire, Garden of Terror, Infernal Shrines and Tomb of the Shbuda Queen. And I mean, well, we've already got the map pick in as well, as we've got the Dawn of the Doors allowed to bend the map first, so they also get to pick the first map. And they decided to go for Infernal Shrines. This means we're going to see Band of Progress with the second pick. Uh, sorry, with the first pick. Thank you transparent for the Twitch Prime. Hey hey, good luck to those handsome men of Brewers. Also this lovely zone of yours, of course. Yeah, of course. Transparent captain of the Brewers. I also like the short names of both teams. Don't know if their short name is Dolph. Dolph. And on the other side we see Band of Brewers or short Bob. <laughs> Hey, it's Coffee. I was streaming for four viewers. Thank you, Coffee. Who just casted a Division 5 game, as far as I remember. I hope you guys had a lot of fun there. Coffee <laughs> is currently a bit memeing. <laughs> Anyways, we're just waiting for two players and we're good to go. Gaslo Ooh, Gaslo games. I think Gaslo is one of the niche heroes. Sometimes he can good stuff. Like, especially on Division 5, there's a lot of sidelining and stuff. It's definitely something which can do a lot more in Division 5. Because people may be slower at responding to you. You push a lane out. So yeah, I think Kessler can do a lot of stuff there. And also with Crow Bomb in team fights, if he gets a good one then. He can do a lot or with the Robo Goblin of course, pushing in the line. May work. Yeah, we've got still waiting on two players. Oh, correction, we're waiting on one player. Maybe, as he's panting. I have just got. Hey, Kazaran! Crotodal, go, Bob. 
Go, Bob, go. <laughs> Fans are already showing up in chat. Do, do everything as it should. It's only one player is missing. Also keep in mind there was a patch a few days ago, five days ago to be certain, and in this patch we see so a few changes. Personally, really interested in the Muradin, the Dwarf Toss, if the block low one, the Dwarf block, is not a very good talent or not. One of the stuff I'm personally interested in. Else we see some. Changes to Stitches, 13 and 16 in the switch. Definitely got a little nerf again. A few changes to Muffle. Also, Sarah got a few buffs in. Which might be interesting for the side of the Band of Ruiz if they got a Sarah player in. Both teams are in the lobby. Let's see if they are ready. And then we are good to go into game number one. Also, a few changes to Resurrect. Also, Uther got a bit nerfed in terms of life. The stun cooldown was increased from 8 to 10 seconds, and the Holy Shock damage was reduced a bit. Also, the Mice of 16 changes has been reverted. Looks like both teams are ready, so let's go into the game number one. Also, we saw some changes to Phoenix. And due to a new level 4 talent, he's kind of a little bit bugged. Gets already baseline at level 1. 11% movement speed. So, yeah. Instead of when he hits level 4 and picks the talent. He only gets those 11% when he has a shield, so which is kind of weird. <laughs> That's so... Yeah. Murder's block is very strong. Yeah, also Raynor changes, that's true. Raynor changes are also very strong. Level 7 talent got built into the one, kinda. In into the, to the, the slow increase. Damage, the, the talent which gives you increased damage against slow targets is now combined with level 7 talent which slow targets with every 4th auto attack, so Seems a little bit strong here Phoenix here, but he's bugged Expecting Bob to play meta Lul <laughs> They can play better against Lul as a 5 player Lives in the Anyways, we've already got the first two bands in. Band of Ruiz removing Junkrat, which is a very strong pick, especially for zoning on the Throne Shrine. Also having decent Shrine clear, and the same you can say about Hanzu. Now we see Band of Ruiz removing the Ufer. This is the time of the Band of Ruiz. <laughs> so strange it. I think Rain is really a strong hero right now. Might even be one of the, the go-to heroes, especially in, in this style of coordinate play. Jaina has been removed, so we see Deathwing is left out, but the same goes for Aura, and this is one of the stronger Aura maps, I would call. There is always hope. There we see Aura as the first pick. <laughs> This transparent, he also last time in the cast talked about it that he really likes the resurrect. So, gonna expect to see that one, even though Iki is also viable, keep that in mind. Having played against the dwarf, Ben, dead, over. <laughs> really great, so we should know it. As he is playing solo in himself, and playing solo in Uther is really annoying from time to time. Now we see the two picks from Don Alphadors. Let's take a for the regular Chromie combo. Chromie very strong, but having a hard time in front of shrines until level 18 with the piercing sands. Though for always surprising. <laughs> yes, they are. And Rega also having good healing, and also a good thing on Rega is to camp clear, of course. And this panic button, you can heal someone with cleanse. Shield on 13 and ancestral healing. 
I've got Brandon Rose his next two picks, picking up Sonia and Raymain. Sonia, really strong hero on the shrine. Okay, main oh yes, true, true, true. Dawn of Dora has also played main support. That is the only thing I forgot. I even casted him once doing it. It was disgusting. I'm not gonna lie, it was disgusting. <laughs> They're just usually trolling people with Bomber Combos. I also got the Greyman picked up by Ben of Ruiz. So no one, no, no, not a usual battery you see. I would have gonna honestly expected the Golden Ban here. Because Golden is kind of the mage battery. While you have from the auto attack side Devala mainly, and then mixed side you have Lunera. It's just so Uther combo which made amazing. I'm not sure. See also Diablo being removed. Also keep in mind the Raymond level 20 on the unleashed is no longer bugged. The right amount of resets. This is on our Fedoras. Picking up the probably most played solo laner. With Leoric. It's quite interesting. I mean it's very understandable with the damage reduced with his evil. Amazing and then also thinking about his ultimate with the two on level 20, it's just a free kill every 50 seconds. And we've got to pair it with the carriage on the other side. You see in the chat, KT incoming, trust me, no. It's Joe Gal or Ins quit. Little KT see. No, no, you all wrong in the chat. Hey, time bully. <laughs> the last pick from Don of is usually one of the auto tech heroes coming in now. So it would be. <laughs> So oh, it's Rooney going for his Zarya. It's true. As far as I remember, he was a Zarya main. But <laughs> the side of Don of the Doors, you see mainly Lyric because of such damage. Strogal, because usually you wouldn't have a lot of percentage damage against Strogal, but Strogal already works really fine against it. I was clearly wrong. Yes, you were, Kratos. <laughs> Because I'm betting. Put this one in two minutes, is done. Thanks, Mr. Mark. Bet everything done. Our fedoras of Rega, Garrosh, Lyric, Sarah, and Gromi. To the draft and think they will win. Or, Expansion Mark, bet B. If you think the band of Brewers or Short Bob will win this with the Oral Chogal comp combined with Greymane and Sonia. Smash mark bet points to see how many points you got. We got the first bet on B. We even get, immediately get two bets in. Ooh. We immediately see the fan favorites, even though keep in mind Don of Dora is currently first ranked in Division 2, while we say Band of Rivers only in the third place. Both teams lost a series. So Band of Rivers lost two series, so we're gonna see how this play out. As we are about to jump in this game. They are floating longer than expected. <laughs> I mean, just looking at the bets coming in, I'm putting 500 points on the, on the Fedoras. I send you have zero. Oh, unlucky. So here we go, there you got 10 points, so now you can bet as well. I mean, looking at both teams, I really kind of, I like both drafts. I think Zara, Lyric, Garrosh, Rega is really hard to get down, but in the other side, kind of lacking a bit of wave clear, especially early on. On the shrines, they also have a hard time doing anything. Here we go. We're up to 10 points, so you can give it away. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that was a bit unfortunate. I'm sorry. I mean, the loading takes longer than expected, so. No oh, talking about it. <laughs> talking about loading. Thrown into the game. Oh, we go. see Garrosh uh, disconnect. We shall be going to back in.
He's not in yet. RIP. Killing <laughs> him for 5 points. <laughs> Meantime. Jeez. This is... No, you can ban. <laughs> you won 5 points. Nice. Third times a charm. Have a garden. Leave my guy. Okay. Is someone having issues right now? Seems like they're ready. Here we go, there's a pause button. Let's jump straight into the game. If we go here, we've got Stark on the left hand side. We've got in blue Donna Vidoras currently first in Division 2 Fierce Launch Season 11. We've got Mist on the Gar, Shuini on Zarya Arunas playing the Chrome, is Sardonic on Rega, and last but not least, it's Brad Buckhead playing the lyric and to the right side we've got banner fruits or bob we've got transparent on his oral sunrise on sonia martin on grayman and insquit on to go with in the needle and page biscuit we can level one talent don't even this is the wrong copy pasta dying is not in here <laughs> level one we see feel the heat Alternative. Some sounds also we see the change. The one time from Cho, but under six minute maximum of Cho gains between the movement speed increased healing. Back before the last patch it was baseline movement speed and healing. And now this is uh, advanced. Uh, uh, when you have less than six minutes of wrong copy pasta. <laughs> Missed already rage created. <laughs> They already gone. No, aside. So far, we see a pretty standard rotation. Also, we see one thing I, I say I really like Sunrise doing. He has time in top so far. Put the way fast. He had time to come into the mid lane. Probably gonna lose maybe a few minutes because Brad Packard is playing this very well here. Yeah, that's three minutes. But in the meantime, we've got Gray Main and Aurel doing the camp down here, and they are fast enough to get it before Garrus is in here to check it. We also got the two. Siege giant, uh, casual camps up. Now the siege camp is under attack already from the team in red. Kind of first. The little throw on to show Gal, but he's just fine. Oh, activates his armor and he goes. Again, missed a little bit later in checking the canvas mark. No, already finished it. Now Rui in the meantime working in the bottom on this area and defending the Casper's. No. It's kind of understandable because on the side of the blue team we don't have a lot of clear on against Murphs and stuff. I'm mean, gonna expect to see Rega soon on the Casper camp down here. Shrine in the bottom. Getting the bruises in at like 230 would be perfect for both teams. So we see Saria Garrosh, the combi is very nice, we see the speaker, oh, oh interesting, we see in for the kill for Garrosh to help out a little bit with the wave clear. You know, I, I just remember the build I usually play with Garrosh when I play Missile Lane, which is quite of a niche thing and quite of a fun thing as well. You go for the E on level 1, so you have amazing wave clear, you've just brought in 1 minion onto the numbers, and then you're just able to clear the rest of the wave in for the kill. In this game, he's trying to help out with it. Thinks he does not really need to self con It's nice to have against Chogal. The Q or depending on his ultimate as well. Very nice to have, but not a must have. I would call it. Again, yeah, order can be very annoying with the whips. That's, that is one of the things. See already from the Verwind build coming in. Chogal now. Already diving in deep. Runa is taking a lot of him, but so is Chogal. Chogal going in. Deep, going in too deep, a further mist to get him even deeper, and there is no help. 
no way Oriel can get to him. He gets punished for that. Shit. Oh, is Ardani dropping low here? But so is Sunrise, and Sunrise going down. It's the third kill for the Fedoras. Probably means that this shrine goes over two different doors, even though they have such cool wave clear. I would say. So well played by them here, getting in the kills and this uh, giving them the space, the position on the shrine, and giving them the first objective of the mate of the game. Martin punished there for being out a bit too far. If the tempo all of us, we're all gonna get level 8 in 4. Chrome is one and a half level lead already. Chogal is just fine. We're really taking all the damage there on this area. Here we see. Yeah, the forward going down. I mean, you always see Lyric against Sonya double soaking and. Derek wins this double though, because Sony is having decent wave clear, but it's not yet enough to clear the wave with just one real wind. See Rayman back in. Taking out camps and stuff, but they saw the bottom siege camp was taken. Now we see Rega scouting out here a bit. Going down the totem. Having vision on this camp. We also got the trap in here from Chromie for vision. I already see them pushing down the mid lane a little bit on the side of Dawn of Fedoras as the next shrine is in the middle and now we've got the one and a half level lead for the Fedoras and the VC level 10 is coming in with the Warlords challenge and two ancestral healing expulsion zone and of course for Lou as you saw already if he loves earlier. <laughs> I'm having a rough time. Being stuck to Joe, I can understand. Oh, it's nice. Oh, there's the speed barrier, but there's the whip from Aurel. Always need this whip to stop Gareth from running in because he's got 40%, 50% movement speed from the speed barrier. The forward goes down, level complete already up. Oh, see, Gal going in there, but just explosions on Martin in. There's the taunt, and it's good by Greymane. I explosions on there, and now we see the Toro Luke coming in against Transparent. Well, getting caught a bit too far there with the Temporal Lube, and she goes down as well. And this means you're already up 6 0 in kills. Assuming Grandmaster with Chagall several seasons, I kind of has an idea that idea how this how that here is supposed to look. Okay, reading is it's hard. I'm sorry. And we've got level tens in now for the band of Rose as well as we see the Aegis under the loop a little bit. The Raft of Berserk kills Bullet, twisting never and the Ham of Twilight, and we already got the fight here of the Bruiser camp. But there's explosion around the point, but it's not enough yet. That's twisting never coming in. The Aegis for Gareth is very dropping low, but so is Lyric. Both falling, Sarah going down as well. Now in squid on the Jogal on the run. We also see Chromie falling here. Chromie is still running them down. Wrap of the Berserker. Missed on the run, can he escape? No, it doesn't really look like it does. Martin is there. Oh, a nice heal from the Tonic. It's enough. Get him out. It's been changed quite a bit since then, though. Yes, that's true. That's a lot of changes lately. It's very interesting to think about it. In North America Division, as you mostly see Chagall either banned or picked early in the drafts. In the European Division, as he's completely ignored. I think we saw one game of it, and that's, this was game three of a best of five series where one team just dominated the other one. But anyways, we've got level 13 now in for the Fedoras. 
Fade the Punisher over the wall as you use the Destined Loop against Oriel as well. There's the Aegis. Everything is coming from Lyric and in the top. I did not even manage to get down the wall there with this Punisher. So very well done from Donna of Doris. And keeping them off the wall. Not even take that one. And we, we've got four more levels until we see the power spike for Chromie with the piercing sand. I mean, I think with a nade is always easy, but it's still some level of play. I, mean, I would really be interested how you could compare it nowadays. Especially back in the days, the all the tournaments really showed uh, where I, I, I think always an A had something where they could surprise Europe and Korea with the first few days. But then had a really hard time because they just got countered. <laughs> but anyways, Trigal here taking a lot of damage. Frodo Loop is up again, but so is the Aegis. They don't decide to go for it. I'm sorry for the small lags. You're missing from title. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry there, I just copy pasted that one. Oh, there's the loop against Insquit. That taunt, took out the fish. There's the Aegis! And the healer, but he is into <laughs> the way, so he cannot go in. There's the damage reduced from Lyric coming in. Same talent here, fight by the way. So, very good fight for Ben of Brewers. Masanoi still wants to keep on going in, but every ultimate used, and they are. <laughs> no one is dying. <laughs> Yeah, we've got level 16 for Donna of Adores. It completes the E-Build for Leric, or at least it should. Dominus Raph will also get the second Ghost Island. Yes, the Royal Focus. We see the push in the top lane, and we see the punish against Brett Bucket diving into the fort here. Chogal goes ham for the kill. Mocha is Exa boy, welcome. Bucket though, even keep his mind, it's still a lyric, so he will respawn faster than everyone else. Sony in the meantime trying to do mid bottom soak. To at least get closer to level 16 for the side of Band of Brewers or Bob. Here we go, we have updated the title, and now it should also say Division 2. Oh, we see the Brine spawning, it's a frozen one, and we already see the head start for the Fedoras. Yes, they have the position because Ben of Brewers is still letting Sony double soak to get to 16. So at least somewhat a chance. I mean, they can also, in theory, give this Punisher up, and they they are confident in defending it. Looks like they want to try to go in again. Wait. Yeah, we see the damage reduced coming in from Lyric. Not hitting Sony though. Skull's already over. Coming on a good spot, but a very nice save to miss taking a lot of damage on this carriage. And Trugal going in. He gets the kill, he gets the kill, but at what cost the Punisher goes over to the Fedoras. As Bucket on the Derek goes in and this is the last minion to take him. This Punisher goes over to the Fedoras, but we still got a push in here for the four. We still got a few minutes, but this last minute is about to die. We're taking a lot of damage, the shield is gone, and good by his area. Strugal goes in and gets killed. We're starting to head into later get stages of the game where Strugal's really starting to cross back heavily. Then we see the for a loop. Damage from Chromie in as well. No E is used there. Eric is about to respawn, and so is Garrosh Sonya, meanwhile, dealing with the Punisher. Doing a very good job with losing the front, the front wall, above the front wall. One tower is sitting on 150 HP. So, okay. 
Almost get the bottom. Siege can under attack from the Battle of Brewers. Pushing in here. Battle of Brewers not trying to paint the map red. They try to take most of the camps. There's the throw against Gara uh, against Trogal. There's the cast bullet into Garrosh face, and Garrosh taking a lot of damage, and the Garrosh doesn't like. Oh, they don't take the point immediately. That was um, the player was to loop. Now Trogal is in the middle, and Trogal gets punished for it. And there's also the entomb against Grey Main, and now Grey Main in a little bit of trouble. But has to jump onto Saria. Will he escape? Yes, he does. He's got under problem vision, so he gets the. With the movement speed for at least one second when he presses down for three seconds. So, because I was 18 now in, so we've got the piercing sands. I mean, I'm a bit surprised we didn't see the Aegis coming out there to not let Chagall get back into it. Anyways, the next shrine in the bottom, Immortal One. Pretty see the wall is about to be opened by the Fedoras. Uh, looking to go in here. In order to take the keep so the shrine can finish the game for them. So hitting level 20. So we see of course buried alive from the side of Lyric. Rega going for the storm shield. We see an yielding defender from Sarah so getting the cooldown reset. And we see Titanic Might from Choke from Garrosh. See, he does not only throw Chogal, he also throws one more person in. Kill camp. No cap camp. Dive instead. <laughs> it kind of looked like it, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. I'm ringing around the cruiser camp up here as it is about to respawn. We see half a level until level 20 for the Band of Brewers. I don't want to give Fedoras the position of the game. Pretty against this team comp. Just don't want it. Let's go Shrine. I mean, they're also now even stealing away the Bruiser camp. Just getting this push in. They push in the bottom. Lyric. He is fine. And now they're trying to go for the fighting. We already see 20 minions on the side of the Fedoras. Trying to go in. Sunrise taking some damage here on the Sonia. It's just speed to win on the Shrine. We see level 20 in for Band of Ruiz. 34 minutes. Oh, silence and tomb on the tomb. Loop at the same time. And Oral goes down first. Make it to as Sonia falls. And that took all in a lot of trouble. He, he, he gets kind of away, but Martin does not on the gray main. Two kills for this. Three kill, sorry, three kills for the side of Dawn of the Doors. And the Mortal Punisher in the bottom immediately going to the core. There we see a lot of damage onto Chagall. Chagall is 75 armor, but it's not enough as he falls as well. At 14 to 7 in kills in favor of the Fedoras. And this is game number one going over to the Fedoras. The blue, very well played. G -G's. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't expect it to go that way. Uh, Fedora's really played a very good early game. Yeah, Chogal is also weak in the early game, but I, I, I honestly thought that the wave kill we see on the side of the Brewers gives them the better early game, but 
Tifidoras just brought in a very good team fight there. And managed to win the first Punisher and scale it hard in the, in the snowball it hard into the later stages of the game. So let's see. Also, this means we'll see now the choice between map pick or first pick on the side of the banner of Brewers. And looking at the map pool so far, we still have left open Battlefield of Eternity, Cursed Hollow, Dragonshire, Tomb of Spider Queen, and Garden of Terror. I mean, just thinking about this game, number one, I would really think the banner of Brewers could maybe try to go for a Makra map as we just saw them losing the team fights, more or less. We see Bob or the Band of Brewers going for the first pick. So, map pick on the side of Dawn of Doors again. When we see... Okay. Already created the lobby, so just join there. Just join the lobby, here we go. Pick by the blue team is Tomb vs. Spider Queen. For the last game, of course, I'm going to give the winners towards the Don or Doras to bet on them. Let's see if I this time am able to. Press it in time, the start contest. And we also see it in the middle of the draft. So we're jumping into game number two. Tomb is the Spider Queen. Map number one, won by the Fedoras, and Ben of Bruce decided to go for the first pick, so we see them now with the first pick here. So Tomb of Spider Queen, the choice of the Fedoras. If you think we will do the same stuff as did in game number one, then exclamation mark bet A in the number of points you want to bet on them. Or if you think the Bruce just missed a little bit and we're going to come back into this game to the series in game number two expression mark bet b and the numbers you number of points you want to bet on them immediately see chromie ban of tomb which is very understandable and chromie was a really hard force so very strong in the last game we get oofer now <laughs> let's see if to get the oofer Hannah is the ban of Don of Adoras. I think probably currently the strongest tank. 
Or do we see the Uther then now? Maybe. I mean, one thing I saw coming out yesterday. Was yesterday? No, it wasn't yesterday. But I saw last time on this map was having a tool who rotates between mid and top. And then having the foreman in the bottom putting pressure in. So you just played like Towers of Doom. I mean, it, it was really weird to see, but it's also a way to play the map. And yes, we see the Uther removed from the side of the Brewers, and Don of the Orus decide to remove Vala as second. As we maybe see Battle Brewers going into this or again, but nope. It's a perfect day for some mayhem. They say and pick up the Junkrat as the first pick. Now we see an extra pick from the Fedoras. See if they want to pick up. Yeah, yeah. They go for tank and support as they pick up the Rega again because it first removed. And they pair it with Diablo, which is quite interesting in two. He can he can be very good if he has the right supports behind him. But if you take a team which punishes him for going in, you can really punish him when he tries to interrupt rotations. He's not having the best time, I would say. But hey, all here we go. And now we see next to pick from Battle of I to also pick up their support, but they don't have their tank yet, so we possibly see a tank ban from the Fedoras. First of all, we see that Chankra is joined by Malfurin and Lunara. Lunara and Chankra having a really good wave clear, have a really good perk, but they have no burst damage at all. And also barely any pressure against the Diablo and due to most of the damage being spell damage. So Diablo is kind of having a fine time with the spell shield, um, I have to say. I appreciate your point today. Oof. Sorry against the chat, I mean. <laughs> Sorry, but don't know for the first of all, removing the Garrosh. Oh, we see the band of Brewers removing Kalfas. Moving the probably very good wave damage for Tomb of Spider Queen, especially Kalfas with the Glow Quest on low one and have a lot of fun here. He can just clear or rotate between two lanes. And here we go again. It's Saria time. For Ruini. Aurora's who will probably stay alone on the range damage leader role if you don't see Sarah as a range damage leader. Which may be so because she maybe picks Will Heat again. It is the hands of Rem. Show me Heptrim. Heptrim and Eve. No, I don't think. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, but I don't think this will be the last pick, Midi. <laughs> Aurora beats on. On Dove and they managed to clown it, or Bob gets to win more points for me. Now we see Band of Brewers with one of the uncommon tanks, I would say, as we see the Arthurs being the pickup here. In the lane for them, we see the Frog. Fedora is only missing the Zolan. Eh? I'm not gonna lie, but I think it's just going to be the Lyric again. <laughs> I, I don't know why they should pick anything else than the Lyric right now. <laughs> Not gonna lie. No, oh, it's the roll. I mean, I can really understand this pickup as well. I personally, the Soul and Main don't really enjoy this map to play Soul Lane with, and I'm one of the few heroes that really enjoy this hero because the fun stuff she can do. Jump around. You can jump around, you can pick on level 4 the active 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 talent and on level 7 the insta balance amazing the amount of rotation on the map which is really fun for me at least yeah always a discussion between which ult to go for her i think the bubble or defender is 90 percent of the time 
all to go for, except for you're playing Praxis or Dragonshire. Go one more minute left. We're already jumping into this game number two, as we see on the left side in blue. Don Arvidora is trying to close the series out in game number two. We've got Arunas on Hanzo Ruini on Zarya Mist on the Diablo, Brett Bucket on the Gold Girl on Ural, and last but least Sardonic on the Wolf or her person I know really well. A very good friend of mine says the cat. Regar. And to the right side, we see Bender Fruis, we see Transparent Autumn of Earth, Insanity on Arthas Martin, playing Junkrat, Page on Lunara, and last but not least, we see Sunrise playing Thrall. Looking at level 1s immediately, we see me the new level 1 Southern from Transparent Autumn of Earth, and we see Rich Innovation. The 10 second Q on himself when he uses his Q onto someone else. Which is quite nice. You don't have to make sure you have one on yourself, but you're in the meantime killing the frogs down here in the bottom. Well, it dropped kind of low. And so far, we see Demolition Expert Quasaria. Ooh, it's a Redemption Hanzo. I can kind of understand it. You don't see much on the side of Pro's who punishes you. Especially not the Arthas usually. He has gone for Frost Presence, so he can root you and walk up into your face. Usually you should be able to escape to the sun to the... I see Rogue and Thunder coming in for the... For all to have an easy time in the bottom. So you see Dauntless for URL to answer the auto attack damage on Thrall. For the top lane we see Mist dropping low. Paige also joining up here again, her team. Her is staying top for the soak. But for the small lags, I have no idea why again. Oh, I had another root against him, but he's able to jump out. I'm having those lags like it's ripping. Ripping. Hunter lays a trap. Okay. Hunter drops down those pints and traps to have some vision. He is sorry for the flags. I don't know. I'm, and if you need to ask him as well, I'm sorry for that. Wait, Sardonic here. Some damage. Oh, but just to push against the needle. Oh, one more heal from Rega to keep him alive. Now Orunas on the hands are taking a lot of damage, but it's just fine. Now we've got level 4 in already for both teams. There are 18 out of 40 stacks. Uh, Hanzo nearly finished redemption. Arthas on 9 out of 20 on level 1. On level 4, 18 out of 150. Troll so far with. Two stacks out of the Xander Frostful pack. Yeah. Also, see, now redemption completed. Lunara in the bottom, meanwhile, going with Nature's Calling, going for the Siege Camp. There's some pressure on this bottom lane. Yurel has no idea about this one. It's quite nice for her. She just stopped damage, just taking in and taking down those giants. And here we saw the damage from Hanzo coming in. Let's get the arrow and some auto attacks and good. <laughs> oh, Baron! That is taking after 80 HP. Oh. Just imagine this grenade hit him. It would have been enough to kill him then. Don Alphadoras again having a very good early game. Besides of having not the best Rift in their team. On the map, which usually is done a bit with Page now getting charged here by Mist on the Diablo and getting killed on the Bambi. The Bambi is no more. Also, see the ticket the poison damage, able to kill off the Hanzo here. So, one for one trade in the end. 
Looking at your alterns, we see Divine Seed and the Hand of Freedom going for a lot of movement. A lot of mobility. She is going to be a very, very fast Cody girl. Yeah, although already on about 90 souls, so he's also close to completion. Sarah only missing 6 hits for the Demolition Expert. Arthur's missing 5. I also see the sharpened arrowheads now coming in for Hanzo. Releasing the armor, especially for first, this is going to be a pain at some point. It's pretty. So as before, the so having those 25 bonus armor is being this them removed again. Down to only 5. No time is shown here in the mist in the meantime, though. It's kind of fine. Double speed, by the way. Uru need taking a lot of damage. Finishing the demolition expert, though. And this is again. Edward Fruit is trying to come back. So, using the other game a little bit. Oh, starting to getting those kills in Aruna is not taking a lot of damage. Does he have to jump? Yes, he does, but is it enough? No, there's this root that he misses. And not in range for this Lodi Arthas. Taking a lot of damage from Hanzo. Dropping very low. He is still kind of fine. In the meantime, we see Yorel trying to pay, but Prawl says no. We're also dropping very low mana down here, so Red Bucket should be able to bully him out at some point in the near future. Does he have to tap? No, he has no tap up yet. Oh, this could be really problem down there in the bottom. Maybe we see only one gem missing for the Fedoras. Meanwhile, we see still 30 missing to be handed in for the ban of the Ruiz. Good enough in total. Got more than enough in total. The Arthas and Mofurin have to pay your Arthas and Venera. Damage onto the Diablo there, even the mine to knock him in, but he's able to charge out. Meanwhile, taking up at least one gem and turning it in for the team in blue, the Fedoras. It's the also at level 10 at the same time. We see so far Ancestral Healing, Ardent Defender, Dragon Arrow. Apocalypse from the Arbus are probably going for the Explosion Zone. Yeah, here we go, Explosion Zone again. Outside we see the Twilight Trim rip entire army after that. Leaping strikes and all the turret, but I'm going to expect it being an Earthquake. Earthquake just always gives you value. Yeah, here we go, Earthquake. Problem with Thundering is you can do more with it, but don't do it that often. Red Bucket jumping in, but he's just he's fine. 40 gems. Sipping a lovely roll. Like you just rotate it around on the map. Get those gems in. It's quite nice for her. A lot of pressure in the mid lane now here from the Fedora. Is there about to take on the fort? There is the expression zone and Arthas cannot get back to his team. Really not being knocked in by the grenade, but it's not enough. Secure the kill route coming in now. Diablo, so you can always jump in. Oh, we see the Fedoras retreating a bit as they got nearly the wall in the bottom, got the wall in the top, and even the forward in the mid lane. Now we see them turning in a second time, and Alpha still there, and they just respawn. That's turn in number two in a row. First turn, two turn ins going over towards Don our Fedoras. Fresh for the people who don't know, none of it are already in the launch for a very long time, and most people of them don't really play the game that actively anymore. You always see an engage onto the Arthas, there's the explosion zone again to have him in armor reduced from. There's the arrow dropping low, and the arrow is falling here. Well, nobody for the Aura to click into there. Oh, but the mine knocks Rooney in and he's trying to deal a lot of damage. Nearly gets. He deals a lot of damage still. No, missed. Well done. Anyways, what I wanted to say the Fedora's not playing the game that 
that much anymore, most of them. Due to everyone still staying in the team and they are still playing a launch together, which is quite some fun for them. They are staying in the same league and they were Division 1 for a long time. This is just for people who don't know the Fedoras. In the bottom, already working on this camp, on the siege camp. You see, only virgins from her with lands. Balance chosen, this is in spell power. I'm in blue, turning in most of the gems now again, except for Yura. She just made a camp in the bottom. But this camp also now taken by the Bob. Team in blue, team in red, better for it. All gems from Fedora's turn in, so even if they get wiped now, they don't lose any gems. We now see Crawl trying to turn him. There is his area, which will stop him of doing so. 40 gems on Mothfur and the bottom is the junk shot. 15 gems. That would not be enough. He turns in alone. You can see the vision with the totem. To go for another turn in this route against Diablo. Diablo now getting cleansed here. Looking for the engage. Does not get the, the overpower in. You see the next few gems turn in by the Fedoras. So little by little. Step by step, they are getting closer towards the, the turn in. Other side, we see 103 gems in reverse. There's the opponent on the earthquake as well. The side, it's Arrow and Arthas going down, make it to his mouth falls as well. And Younger going down, but he still takes two people with him. But we also see Ro coming in, taking down the narrow. So 4 for 2, but Diablo respawned immediately. It's most of the gems for Band of Fruit. At least a lot of gems for Band of Fruit is lost. Prob was able to recover a lot. Just him on 70 gems. He's going now for the turn in. To de push the lanes, as we see in the meantime, the Fedoras. Having well, kind of three tanks and one healer. Pushing in. Oh, going for the bot. For the boss, really with the expansion zone, they are definitely be able to get this one. So they've got the web rework against them, but they still got the boss and level six advantage. Very good, and now the other is going in for Arthas. Arthas taking a lot of damage there. Hits by <laughs> boss is done. Any arrow though coming in misses. The boss still goes for the keep. You're all knocked out there. Reptire coming in, getting the kill on to Pablo. Silence from Malfurin, and they get the kill against Zero as well. Mind Frawl has needed an extra turn on him on his own. Just picks up two more gems he has a turn in. First weapon away for Ben of Brew is all this about due to the web lanes being very far pushed out for the Fedoras. Fail of the Fedoras. We saw the weapon in the middle and the bottom barely doing anything, just taking out the front walls. Something you usually do not expect from them. Minute 13 Punisher. That's all from the minute 13 web weavers. Lunara pushing in. H is culling. Really dealing a massive amount of damage against those structures. Already waiting around. The objective trying to get ready for their turn. But also see everyone from the Fedoras back up. So Hanzo is about to finish redemption again. And here we go to them. Army of the Dead. Apoc. Earthquake. A lot of stuff used to zone as well. Squid in the meanwhile, on the ladder, we hopping around their opponents to get out of any harm's way. She's fine, a lot of stuff used their arrows still up. There's the Iron Defender and Zestra Healing for There's the Twilight Dream. Ripped also still up for the brand of Brewers. There comes the Riptire and Zestra Healing onto Diablo. Minus 15 armor from 
Arthas has the arrow. Very good arrow coming in there. And good by Arthas Prince Baron on the run. Run fast enough. An arrow going down. It's two kills for the Fedoras and that transparent on the run. Some off for red. Orange slowing down and piercing arrows able to finish off. Mouth and Thrall and now also we saw Zarya going in to secure the kill on Jungrat and that's probably GG as we see me digging for core and GG in the chat is called. GG to the Fedoras. Look pretty scary. Not gonna lie, it's really interesting to how it will go for them according to playoffs. Not even waiting for playoff viewers. We were not on the end screen, GG. Go back here to the main screen. GG will play there from the Fedoras. I really have to say they really played really well. I'm not gonna lie, Division 2 myself, so it would be even scarier for me. But I don't want to be in one of the teams who face them in the playoffs. It looked really scary. Going into the last playoff day. I mean, I'm gonna make the predictions here and now that I think that the Vidor is probably coming to the finals or at least very close to the finals. Anyways, thank you everybody for watching, I hope you can all get your points, we are going to raid Kaldor as he's still alive with some Division S. Thank you everybody for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time.